Good morning and welcome to St. Joe. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 919, Baptized in Water, hymn number 919. sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore I ask blessed Mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God may Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Heavenly King, O oh God Almighty. 
of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation pour out we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem, at this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galatians? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia. Pontus, Nasia, Phrygia, and Pomphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya and near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, 
my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Take away their breath, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and you renew the face of the spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Please join us in singing our sequence on page 541, Holy Spirit, Lord Divine, page 541.
According to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, 
and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. A mother was having trouble getting her son to get up to go to church on Sunday morning. It was early. The son kept making excuses. He was tired. And he said, really at church, nobody really likes me there anyway. And finally he said to his mom, give me two good reasons why I should go to church today. And she said, well, one, you love Jesus. And two, you're the pastor. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciples and the beginning of our church. Normally, you'll see priests and deacons wear red to celebrate memorials and feasts for uh, martyrs, those who have been killed for their faith, their testimony in Jesus Christ. But at Pentecost, red signifies the presence of the Holy Spirit and how the disciples on that day were filled with the Holy Spirit and able to speak in foreign tongues. How well do you know the Holy Spirit? How would you say, what would you say if someone asked you, what is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Would you say you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Or maybe three forceful, wait a minute, we'll do a visual, because I happen to have a Holy Spirit meter here, okay? <laughs> so a quarter full, half full, three fourths, or maybe all the way full of the Holy Spirit. Where are you? As the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit has been sent to us as believers in Christ to strengthen our faith in so many ways and to be an advocate for us when we pray to God. Through our belief in Jesus Christ, we already have the Holy Spirit inside of us. But do we allow ourselves to have such a relationship with this Spirit so that everything we think about, we say, or we do, all of it reflects the fullness of the Spirit within us and our willingness to share that Spirit with others. Catholic tradition it has it that the Holy Spirit offers us seven gifts. And guess what? They're free. Line up. We should pray for these seven gifts. They're wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God. And that fear of God is not fear of punishment, but it's fear that we would somehow sever that relationship with our God. St. Thomas Aquinas, a scripture scholar and one of the doctors of our church, he developed, but this is back in the 1200s, so over a thousand years ago, he developed an interpretation for each of these gifts that has become the church's standard, and you, you can look these up. But in paragraph 1831 of our catechism, it names the seven gifts and it states, this is important, they make the faithful, that's us, docile in readily obeying divine inspirations. Ever been inspired by the Holy Spirit? Do you obey that inspiration? I, know, I don't know about you, I'm constantly praying for the three, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Constantly praying for that. Being truly filled with the Holy Spirit can help you make better decisions. And I know this, and I'm gonna share an example I thought about this past week. A number of years ago, 
I was bringing one of my sons home from an AAU basketball game. Uh, actually, it was a practice. It was during the week. It was about 10 o'clock. And I was driving east on I-74, just east of town here. There weren't a lot of cars out on the road that time of night, but there was a Jeep, maybe about a half mile in front of me. As I'm driving, I notice the Jeep suddenly, erratically really, starts swerving to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, and finally, it speeds up and it, it ends up rolling into the median. I immediately handed my cell phone to my son, told him to dial 911. I pulled the car over to the right side of the emergency lane of the interstate to see what we could do. My son gets 911 on the phone and hands the phone back to me. It's dark, it's scary. The few vehicles coming along seem so loud. And I say to my son, maybe we should just wait. Wait for 911 to get here. My son, he doesn't really hesitate. He says, Dad, we got to go. They need our help. So now we're out of the car, running across the eastbound lanes of the interstate, entering into the median with high grass. I'm still talking on the phone while worried my son's going to get hurt as he runs, runs ahead to the Jeep and declares that no one's in the Jeep. He weaves back and forth through the grass and finally finds the driver two to 300 feet from the Jeep sprawled out in the grass. Recently trained in CPR, my son, he says, he thinks he feels a faint pulse. At the same time, a big semi-truck has just now stopped in the westbound lane, stopped all the traffic, and I see police lights and a state trooper walking toward us. The trooper examines the driver and announces fairly quickly that the driver, a young woman, has died. I know my son and I both felt so sad. <clears throat> we were hoping, I guess, that as most people would, in some way, she could have been saved. And so it was over. We went home, still somewhat in shock. And my son and I, we tell my wife about the experience we just had. I expected her, expected her to show some kind of emotion, maybe some sympathy or some ask for details, more details about what we, we saw, what we were involved in. But she didn't. She just turned to me and asked in a serious voice. She said, did you pray for her? Did you ask the Holy Spirit for help? Did you baptize her? My heart sank. I hadn't even thought of that. My meter reader would have been on the low side, I'd say. I had, if I had specifically asked the Holy Spirit for guidance that night, could she have survived? Would she have survived? Had I even thought to baptize her, not knowing if she was or not, she was unconscious laying there. I'm sure if my, my Holy Spirit meter would have been on low. As Catholics, my wife and I were taught that in times where there is danger of death, that not only priests, but any one of the laity can baptize an unbaptized person. And if in doubt about the person's status, assume unbaptized and baptize them. As Catholics, we should all know that through baptism, we receive remission of our sins, become adopted sons and daughters of God, and are made into new creations by water and the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 5, Jesus says to Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Does this mean that if the young woman who died that night, if she had not been baptized, that she would not be able to get into heaven? Fortunately, we have this. In our catechism, again, it says, not necessarily. 
Although being baptized makes a clear path to heaven, but in paragraph 1260 it says, every man, that would mean woman too, who is ignorant of the gospel of Christ and of his church, but seeks the truth and does the will of God in accordance with his understanding of it, they can be saved. It may be supposed in that case that such person would have desired baptism explicitly if they had known of its necessity. I do believe the Holy Spirit helped guide my son and I that night to help find the driver. But if I had been more filled with the Holy Spirit, I would have prayed over her and I would have baptized her. Through our belief in Jesus Christ, we already have the Holy Spirit inside of us. But do we allow ourselves to have such a relationship with this Spirit so that everything we think, we say, and we do reflects the fullness, the fullness of that one Spirit and our willingness to share it with others? I leave you with this from John in our Gospel today. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you, and you, and you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, <coughs> of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brethren, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For all who have been signed and sealed with the Holy Spirit, that this church may be united as one body made of many parts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples of the world who do not know God, that the spirit of truth proclaimed to every nation may indeed renew the face of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the outpouring of the spirit of peace, that men and women may know the forgiveness of their sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community gathered by God and the Spirit who makes holy our Eucharistic gifts, may strengthen and refresh us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those in Afghanistan affected by the flooding there and for all affected by natural disasters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For definitive and lasting peace for all those in the midst of armed conflicts, especially those in the Ukraine, 
Palestine, Israel, and Myanmar, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our graduates of grade school, middle school, high school, colleges, or other places of higher learning, may God grant that they are able to use their knowledge and skills they've attained to help spread the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, the discouraged, the emotionally disturbed, those in prison, and all who need our prayers this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those we are remembering in our hearts, and for Mary Ellen Ferguson, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we turn to you on this feast of Holy Pentecost with gratitude for the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in your church, in the world. We ask that you keep us ever attentive to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit and responsive to them. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing our preparatory hymn, hymn number 893, Immaculate Mary, hymn number 893.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei We proclaim your death as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, hymn number 912, Leaving Her Water Jar Behind, hymn number 912. Jacob. 
Next hymn is 914, O Breathe on Me, O Breath of God, hymn 914.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that the saving food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you go get the aspirin up? I would like to invite Patrick and Jen forward. They celebrate today 25 years in the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony, which is very exciting. Pop up on the step, just like on your wedding day. Face each other, hold hands, would you? Almighty God, we pray your blessing upon Patrick and Jen as they celebrate today 25 years in the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony. Send them help from heaven, Almighty God. Be a tower of strength for them. Protect them against the attacks of the enemy. We beg you, Lord, to look on these your servants graciously uphold the institution of marriage you established for the continuation of the human race so that Patrick and Jen who have been joined together by your authority and your call for 25 years may remain faithful together by your loving help. Bless them now and always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Patrick, kiss your bride. Congratulations. Love you guys. Congratulations. And Waylon and Harrison, would you come forward with your parents, please? there. God bless you. These two young men have earned the Parvuli Dei Award, which is Latin for Children of God, and through the course of their earning of this award, they have deepened their love for the Lord, for His Holy Church, and they have deepened their desire to share the faith that they have been given by their parents. Uh, with their troop, with their church, and with the whole world. I'm very proud of you boys. I'm going to now bless these medals that you will wear. Almighty God, we ask you to look on these medals in love. They are signs to us of your goodness. They remind us of your constant care, protection, love. We ask that Waylon and Harrison, who will put them on today, may be reminded always by looking at them and wearing them of the most important gift they have, their Catholic faith. We invoke your blessing on these medals, Almighty God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And here you go. Maybe you guys can put them on. Here you go. Proud of both of you. Congratulations on a well earned award. Congratulations, Harrison. Waylon, congratulations. Bless you. Well, everybody, there's youth group at 6 o'clock today. There's lots of other announcements and things in the bulletin. Please do take a quick peek and uh, enjoy this beautiful day uh, of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia.
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, We Praise You, Lord, for Jesus Christ, hymn number 918.